Good afternoon, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny again. Due to my lack of sleep, getting up at 3.45 in the morning, and just, I'm totally wired. I thought, since I got nothing else to do with myself, and I'm still kind of frustrated and, you know, really upset about my Flickr account, and so I thought I'd make a video. I mean, I mentioned uh, I mentioned this morning I have been reading The Cold Warriors, Writers Who Wage a Literary Cold War by Duncan White. I've been reading this today. I've read 157 pages. I really like this book. And I, I, I didn't mention that I got these books back out of the lower level over the weekend, and I read... I've been, I was reading them a while back, I can't remember, the, the Notebooks, 1936 to 1947 by Victor Serge, and Memoirs of a Revolutionary by Victor Serge. I was really enjoying these when I was reading them, and <coughs> I was reading in The Cold Warriors about uh, the Bolsheviks and the Trotskites and, the, and Stalin and the Purges and the fake trials and he talks about these things because he was very critical of Stalin and he wrote a book on Trotsky who was very critical of the, of Stalin and Stalin had Trotsky assassinated by uh, assassins and um, which is covered here in the Cold Warriors is, is goes into depth about it. The assassination of Trotsky, Leo Trotsky who was in exile in Mexico at that time when he was assassinated. And uh, the notebooks, uh, Victor Serge, he lived in exile too. He lived in Mexico in exile, and that's where he died in 1947 from a heart condition. And he lived all over, but uh, so I was really enjoying these when I was reading them. I haven't got back into the memoirs of a revolutionary, which is really... These are both excellent books. Uh, the New York Review B Books has published other books by him, which I don't have in our library, but these I do have. Also recently, the biographer James Atlas died, and I thought I, I got these out because my wife came across an article about him in a newspaper, and I got him out. James Atlas, he, was, he wrote... In his early 20s, he wrote Dalmore Swartz, The Life of an American Poet by James Atlas. And, uh, uh, yeah, it says here, with the appearance in 1938 of his first book, Del Dalmore Swartz and Dreams Begin Responsibilities, 24-year-old Dalmore Swartz was immediately recognized as a genuine and uh, innovative force in American letters, drawing praise from T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, Alan Tate, John Crow Ramson, Wallace Stevens, and William Carlos Williams. A decade later, his book of short stories, The World as a Wedding, was characterized by many critics as the definitive portrait of their generation. Yet Swartz's early promise was followed by a tragic decline and finally, in the Midtown Manhattan Hotel, at the age of 52, he died. And then, I read this a number of years ago. This is a very famous biography by James Atlas on the writer Saul Billow. And this is Billow, a biography. I really, this is really an incredible biography. And then, James Atlas wrote, I bought this, I think it came out in... 2017, A Shadow in the Garden, A Biographer's Tale by James Atlas. I haven't read this, but I got it for, my, for our library. So yeah, I showed my wife these books, Billow by James Atlas, A Biography, Delmore Swartz, A Life of the American Poet by James Atlas, and In the Shadow of a Garden, A Biographer's Tale by James Atlas. These are the books uh, I could show you. I've been reading Ducks, Newberry, Lucy Elman. This thing is a clunker. It's over a thousand pages. 
and I've read thus far 161 pages. These are the books I got. I got this in the mail today. This is a New York Review book, The Corner That Held Them by Sylvia Tansen Warner. And then I got this book too on sale, Mr. Fortune by Sylvia Tansen Warner. She's a, supposed to be an acclaimed uh, British writer. She was also, she's mentioned in The Cold Warriors because she was an, uh, a communist back in the 30s and 40s. I did order, used a biography on Sylvia Townsend Warner. I'm supposed to get in the mail used uh, this week. So I got these. So these are kind of books that I look at besides the other books I've been reading. But like I said, I've been primarily been reading the uh, in the mornings. I've been reading the Reformation commentary on Romans 1 through 8. And I also have been reading the Biblical Theology of the New Testament by Peter Schoenmacher. So those are things I read when I'm not blown out, when I'm not frustrated, when I'm not writing in my diary or talking to my wife, or looking into the void, or wandering around in the dead zone. So I've been reading The Cold Warriors this afternoon in my exhausted state. And... Uh, I got in the mail today, the corner that held them, Sylvia Townsend Warner. Uh, uh, it says here, Sylvia Townsend Warner's The Corner That Held Them is an historical novel that, like no other, one that immerses the reader in the dalliness of history rather than history as a given sequence of events that in time it comes to seem. Time ebbs and flows and characters come and go in this novel, set in the era of the Black Death, about a Benedictine convent of no great note. The nuns do their chores and seek to maintain and improve the fabric of their house and chapel and struggle with each other and themselves. The book that emerges is a picture of a world run by women, but also a story stirring, disturbing, witty, utterly entrancing of a community. What is the life? of a community and how does it support or constrain a real humanity? How do we live through it and and in and in through us? These are among the deep questions that lie behind this rare triumph of the novel novelist art. So yeah. So like I said I've been reading the notebooks 1936, 1947. I've read about a hundred and 213 pages in this. I was reading this while I was watching football on Saturday and Sunday. I haven't gotten back into this one yet, but I was really enjoying this one when I was reading it. So yeah, I'm still writing in my diary for the year 2019 on page 816. Drinking coffee. It is 3.39. September the 10th, 2019. And yeah, I just thought I'd drop in make a video, say hi. Until next time, bye.